Uh, with every passage from one life stage into another, it's natural that certain friendships will be lost. And that's true. You know, not, not all your friends will, will, will go the distance with you. You know, friends, there are friends that are forever. There, there are friends that are just for a season of life, you know. Yeah, there are friends that can go into the next level with you. If for whatever reason, whatever reason, it might be they can't go into your social class. Uh, it might be they don't believe the same thing with you. It might be that they are stuck in the past. But if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Don't force friendship on anybody. You know, just do your part. Those that your friends will come along. Be yourself and you'll find your friends. Right? Don't try to change who you are. Don't 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 lower your value just because you want to keep a friend. It will hurt you. It will hurt you. It might look like it's not hurting you, but don't forget if you if you lower your value, then you become less than you should be. Right? And you're not going to be happy being less. God wants you to be more, not less. More, not less. If any friendship is having to require you to be less, that person is not a friend. That person is your enemy, not your friend. Your friendship should cause you to want to be more, to want to be more, want to be everything that God has made you to be. Any friendship that is demanding of you to be less is not a friendship. It's something against your destiny, something against the calling of God for you. Something against you entering into your wealthy place. Every friendship you want to cause you to be more, to be everything that God has created you to be. Right? Anything you want to say to that, Toba? Do you, do you understand what I just said? Do you agree with it? Toba, did you hear me? Oh, sorry, I, I haven't missed Dr. Gabriel. Let me read Dr. Gabriel's note. It is good for people not to abuse friendship, making it parasitic. Thanks. I agree with that, doctor. We should have something to offer each other. Sure, sure. If you don't have something to offer, then that's not friendship. You know, and it's not necessarily finance, like, like uh, Dr. Gabriel says. It's not necessarily finance again. It's what you have. Let me read, make them just read what I said last week. It's what you have. And we have all been given different things. When I first finished my youth service, I didn't have money, but I had time. I wasn't working. I had so much time. So much time. <laughs> and I used that time. I went to visit. I used to visit a dear sister who was working there. She did that. She, she was an optometrist. I used to spend a lot of time with her. You know, probably I overdid it. Because she wasn't married then. So I probably was confusing her because I had someone I was chasing, but had the time to spend fellowship with friends, you know, but the opposite sex, you know, the emotions begin to come into place. But we enjoyed friendship. we we'll probably confuse each other on the other side, but we enjoyed fellowship. You know, I had a friend, also another lady who was sick, you know, and I was able to spend time with her. She was recovering, you know. I guess I, I make it's easy for me to make lady friends, I guess, probably because I'm surrounded by, by girls. I have a sister in front of me. I have two sisters after. So I leave years with women, right? So maybe that's why it's easy. I have a lot of lady friends, right? But yeah, but then I had time, right? It can be connection, right? You know this, right? I spent time chatting with a friend, um, Yesterday morning, you know, he has a farm, I have a farm, but he's ahead of me in some things, I'm ahead of him in some things. And we began to, began to share what we know, the resource that we have. So I have someone for me that's going to do a business plan for him on something I'm already doing. He's already given me contact on, of someone that brought cattle for him, goat for him, brought potatoes that I need, ginger for him, for my not. You know, he's giving me contact for, for how he gets a NYC coppers. <laughs> it's not nicely money it's not nicely money and that's what we miss it you know in the church where all we talk about is offering there are people that don't have offering to give but they have what we need it might be that they have connection to the police to the army to the ministry within this permit or the other they're equally valuable as that person that only brings money right God never asks for what we don't have and what we have is not just money for as long as you thyself be true, 
There's always something you can bring to every relationship you find yourself, and it does not have to be money. Right? Powerful. You know? So, uh, Brenda Hulan puts it this way. He said, listening is a, magical, is a magnetic and strange thing, a creative force. The friends that really listen to us are the ones who move towards. When we're listening to, it creates us makes us unfold and expand, you know? So when it comes to friendship, so sometimes that's all you have to give, you know? Uh, I'm a counselor. I've been a counselor for years, you know? And, and a lot of people get to talk to me because I'm able to listen. That's the quality of a, of a counselor. But it also comes useful in friendship. So sometimes all you can do for some people is that you're just there to listen and hear them, hear them out. Right, a lot. Some people, a lot of people come to me just for me a sounding board, right? And and, and that's important. Sometimes we, you you go and commiserate with people, and you're quick to say talk. People say, "Oh, if that person died because God needs an angel in heaven." That's stupid. Someone has someone has died, and the way you are trying to console the person is that God needs an angel in heaven. Who told you? Did God tell you this an angel in heaven? You see, uh, Job's friends instead of keeping quiet and just con just being there for him. They were saying a lot of things that they had no clue about, right? It's sometimes all you need to give to your friend is just to be there, your presence. Your presence. It's not what you say. It's not what you give. Just your presence. Just your being there. Just by being available. Just being a friend. Just being someone they can talk to. They, they, they might not even have an answer to what they are talking about, but just that it's making them talk. They can say what they've been bottling up on the inside of them. That might be all, all you have to give as a friend. And that will make a difference in that friendship, in that relationship, right? So it's not necessarily just money. It's not even you knowing what to say. It's not even you being wise. Just that you are available as a person can make a whole lot of difference to people. But but listening, being a friend listens. A, fr a friend listens. If you are not some, someone that listens, then you're not a friend. If you're just there to argue, you're not a friend. God says, come and let us reason together. Friends reason. If you cannot reason with me, you can't be my friend. You can't be anybody's friend. You can't reason with the person, right? God says, come and let's reason together. A friend reasons with you. He might not have the answer for you, but he can help you break it down. Break it down that you have better understanding of the situation. But a friend listens. If you are here with people that don't listen to you, they are not your friends. They're your enemies. They are not your friend. Run. Run for your life. A friend listens. A friend listens. Right. As we try to bring this to close, this is my penultimate slide on this. You know, it says some things to think about regarding friends in your life. You know, learn to listen to your friends. Just to reemphasize what I just said. If you if you want to be a friend, you know, the Bible says that either one, either must have friend must show himself friendly. Right. So if you want to have friends in your life, you want to build your friendship, you so that you can get the benefits that friendship brings. Right. You must show yourself friendly. And part of showing yourself friendly is to learn to listen to your friends. You are not the most intelligent one amongst your friends. If you are trying to show that you are intelligent, you are not a friend. You know, uh, on my, from my workplace uh, site, I have someone that two of us always seemingly talk. We're not supposed to be arguing, but I'm not trying to argue, but it's tending towards that. And, you know, and when, for as long as we're doing that, we're not building friendship, right? But I'm hoping that he understands and it's, it's the fun part. But if when you're arguing with somebody, you're not building friendship. If you're arguing with your spouse, you and your spouse, you're always arguing. You're not building commonality. You're not building intimacy, right? If, if all you are doing is argue, 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 you're going to divorce because you are separating yourself, right? You build friendship by reasoning together, by listening to one another, not by debates, by listening to each other by hopefully seeing the other person's point of view. You don't have to argue. You don't have to agree. But at least give that person a sense of that you respect where they are. I don't have to agree with what you are saying, but I have to give you the benefit of being human that you have a right to believe what you believe. That's what I do with my wife. You know, my wife probably doesn't like it. I like to tell my wife all the time, you're an adult. You're an adult. So I respect your decision. I don't have to agree with your decision, 
I agree. It has. I respect it. But respecting it means that you have to be ready for the consequence also, right? Me taking you up as an adult and respecting your decision means you also need to be ready for the consequence, right? I'm not going to force you against your decision. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. I'm going to advise you the way I see it. But you don't have to take my advice. You don't. It's your life. You're an adult. Being an adult means that you can make decisions. If a friend is always trying to force you against your decision, trying to override your own choice, that's not your friend. It's your enemy. It's against your life. It doesn't matter whether who is right or wrong. Friendship respects each other, knows where the boundaries are. Respect, respects you. It helps you to think, but never forces themselves on you. God, that's that's only example God chose us. The devil does that. God does not. God says, come and let us reason together. Come and let us reason together. That's what friends do, right? So learn to listen if you want to be a friend, right? Being listened to makes, feel, makes us feel understood, cared for, and seen. When someone listens to you, you feel that sense of being, being understood, being cared for, and being seen, right? And that's important. That's important because that's the way we see love. We don't see love by, I love you. Oh, yeah, I love you. The way love shows itself to each one of us is that we feel seen. We don't feel invisible. We feel seen. We feel heard. And thereby we feel loved. We feel seen. We feel heard. We seemingly feel understood. And, we, and thereby we feel loved. That's how to be a friend. So if you want friends, be a friend. Listen to somebody. Make that person be visible. That person is saying something, maybe reflect what they are saying back to them. Just say you are hearing them. You don't have to necessarily understand them. You, well, you don't have to necessarily agree with them. But you seek to understand, no doubt. We don't have to agree with it, but that's what they are. So therefore, I have friends that, I'm, that don't have the same faith as I am. I'm a pastor. I'm a Christian. I have friends that are Muslims. That's their choice. I have friends that are atheists. That is their choice. I am not going to force them to be a Christian. They've chosen not to be. That's their choice. They're adults. If we have opportunity, I will tell them why I believe what I believe. But they don't have to believe what I believe. They're human beings. They're adults. They make their own choice. So if you want to be a friend, consider. Yeah. So it, it, it's. Um... All right. So pretty much the, the, you, you need you, is listening to friends, you know, and uh, making them feel heard, feel, 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 feel loved. If they are rich in your life, address them, you know, think about your social routines and you might want to tweak them, you know, because sometimes we get into some routines whereby we, we do them without our hearts being in it. Right. I've, I've seen that even my exercise routine. Sometimes I'm doing it so often. I don't think about it. But when I don't think about it, I become inhuman around it. So it's not benefiting me psychologically. It might be benefiting me physically, but it's not benefiting me psychologically. But when I do exercise, I need to get the benefit all around, not just the physical part of it. I wanted to work on my mind. I wanted to work on my spirit. And for that to happen, I must be present in the moment of doing that. So it's not just the routine, but that my mind is present even in my exercise. And that makes a lot of difference. All right, in closing, we're going to look at these three quotes here and, and try and put the close here. It says, friends become wiser together through a healthy clash of viewpoints. The key word is healthy. You know, we don't all have to agree. You know, Dr. Gabriel and I might don't necessarily agree politically, you know, uh, that we respect each other's viewpoint, irrespective. I don't see him less because of what he believes in. He doesn't see me less because of what I believe in. We we know what brings us together. We know where we disagree and we respect one another. That's what friends do, right? Uh, you can't stay in your corner of the forest, 
waiting for orders to come to you. If you want to have friends, you need to step out. You don't just say, oh, nobody has got to see me. You're, not, you're going to die alone. You need to step out, right? You need to step out. You can't stay in the, your corner of the forest waiting for orders to come to you. You have to go to them sometimes. Sometimes you have to step out. That's what it takes to our friends. You have to step out of your comfort zone and do your part. You know, you have to be a blessing. You have to be a blessing. If you want to have friends, you have to show yourself friendly. Show yourself friendly. One day you will need people showing themselves friendly to you. But you have to do your part, first of all. You know, and lastly, uh, looking at this quote by Stephen uh, Richard, it says, if we truly love ourselves in spite of our flaws, then we can love others in spite of theirs. Sometimes there are people that don't love themselves because of their flaws. And that affects your sense of self. But as long as your sense of self is low, it's going to affect your social fitness. You need to have a healthy sense of yourself to be able to make friends. Okay, if you don't like yourself, you can't like others. You got to like yourself irrespective of your flaws. All right? If you don't like yourself, you can't like others. You are who you are. At my age, I'm not going to grow taller. So I'm not going to feel bad about my height and say, because I'm not tall. I don't, I feel, I don't, I don't, I don't feel okay. If, as long as I'm struggling with that, I cannot be a blessing to someone else. I got to find peace in myself before I can share my peace with someone else. To, to, to have friends, you have to as well find peace in yourself. Be a friend to yourself. Because until you're, un, until you're a friend to yourself, you cannot be a friend to others. You got to love yourself where you are. Yes, you can always get better, right? I might not grow taller, but I can be better. I can be taller psychologically. I can be taller spiritually, not, not physically, right? But you can be. And it's not about how you look. If you look at those uh, <laughs> mafia, mafia, mafia lords, uh, kings, they are the smallest, but yet they are leading all the other big ones. David was not the biggest. <laughs> a lot of people that can fight better than David came to David, and David was leading people that were bigger than him. So it's not your physical size. It's, the, it's your size on your psychological, your size spiritually. That's what people follow. People follow anointing, not your physical sight. People follow this hair around you. If you can build that air around you, people will follow you. People will gravitate towards you. But you have to have that air. You have to have confidence in yourself. If you don't, you're not going to have friends. People won't gravitate towards you. Why? Right? You need to believe in yourself. And others will believe in you also. Right? So that's the end of chapter.